one unmistakable conclusion that can be drawn from Monday's dueling press statements on the debt limit battle is that President Bar Barack Obama is losing the argument for endless deficit spending. But a second conclusion is equally important. House Speaker John Boehner, who Obama accused of trying to sell out the fiscally responsible Tea Party faction of his Republican Party, is also losing. President Obama bemoaned in his July 25th address to the nation that the only reason this balanced approach isn't on its way to becoming law right now is because a significant number of Republicans in Congress are insisting on a different approach, a cuts-only approach, an approach that doesn't ask the wealthiest Americans or biggest corporations to contribute anything at all. And because nothing is asked of those at the top of the income scale, such an approach would close the deficit only with more severe cuts to programs we all care about, cuts that place a greater burden on working families. That was a clear reference to the Tea Party movement. And because the U.S. Constitution allows the House to stop any legislation, Obama's only remaining strategy is to appeal to the American people. I'm asking you all to make your voice heard. If you want a balanced approach to reducing the deficit, let your member of Congress know. If you believe we can solve this problem through compromise, send that message. Obama also hinted that Boehner was negotiating with the White House for much higher taxes, but that Boehner bailed out at the last minute. While Republicans might like to see deeper cuts and no revenue at all, there are many in the Senate who have said, yes, I'm willing to put politics aside and consider this approach because I care about solving the problem. And to his credit, this is the kind of approach the Republican Speaker of the House, John Boehner, was working on with me over the last several weeks. It's interesting that House Speaker John Boehner backed out of a tax increase deal with the White House after agreeing to it in the secret negotiations. Did Boehner ultimately back out because he didn't think he could convince enough Republicans to sell out? Or did he back out in order to avoid a backlash against his own leadership in the, in the House of Representatives? Those questions remain unanswered. Boehner did have the best line of the two press statements. President Obama used the phrase, balanced approach, seven times in his address to the nation to describe his plan for tax increases. Sort of buzzword. This balanced approach asks everyone. Balanced approach to reducing the deficit. Balanced approach isn't on its way to becoming law. And keep in mind that under a balanced approach, what we're talking about under a balanced approach is asking for a balanced approach by saying this kind of balanced approach. Boehner explained what Obama meant by balance. The president has often said we need a balanced approach, which in Washington means we spend more and you pay more. Reality is that neither the White House nor the GOP leadership in Congress have a plan to actually balance the budget, though both sides claim that's what they want. Boehner noted that the solution to this crisis is not complicated. If you're spending more money than you're taking in, you need to spend less of it. Boehner also added that the president's approach is simple. And the sad truth is that the president wanted a blank check six months ago, and he wants a blank check today. President Obama claimed his approach would cost middle-class taxpayers nothing. And keep in mind that under a balanced approach, the 98% of Americans who make under $250,000 would see no tax increases at all. None. But Obama admitted that this wasn't true in the very same speech, admitted that the path of accumulating endless debt put the nation and the middle class on a trajectory toward poverty. Now, every family knows a little credit card debt is manageable. But if we stay on the current path, our growing debt could cost us jobs and do serious damage to the economy. More of our tax dollars will go toward paying off the interest on our loans. Businesses will be less likely to open up shop and hire workers in a country that can't balance its books. Interest rates could climb for everyone who borrows money. The homeowner with a mortgage, the student with a college loan, the corner store that wants to expand. In fairness, Obama did claim in the same speech that his approach would bring the budget into balance. But the reality is, his own Office of Management and Budget 
says that Obama's budget proposals, even with the $4 trillion of projected spending increases pared away from his 10-year plan, would still continue to ring up the national credit card forever. In short, Obama's own hirelings admit that Obama's claim that he would balance the budget is a lie. The nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office says the same thing. Boehner claimed Monday that, In Washington, more spending and more debt is business as usual. Well, I've got news for Washington. Those days are over. President Obama came to Congress in January and requested business as usual. He had another routine increase in the national debt, but we in the House said, not so fast. Here was a president asking for the largest debt increase in American history on the heels of the largest spending binge in American history. Obama may have done the Tea Party a favor by revealing that Boehner is part of the business as usual crowd in Washington. The Tea Party movement is starting to hold the line, and for the day, it appears to have held that line. But there's still plenty of time for a Washington-style sellout, an all-too-familiar theme for those who have watched Washington for many years. Obama's trying to rally the nation behind the idea that our budget deficit is, a spend, is not a spending problem, but rather a revenue problem, even falsely claiming that our spending is the lowest since Eisenhower. Actually, measured in any way, Federal spending is at the highest level since at least World War II and perhaps forever. The open question remains, how will the American people in the Tea Party movement respond to Obama's false rallying cry?